Are you in the market for a mini PC? You just rather have that smaller form factor, nice little powerful mini PC. Maybe today we got the one for you. We're gonna be taking a look at the brand new minis forum, Elite Mini HM90 Mini PC. And my channel, we mainly focus on gaming, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be testing this thing out, playing some games. So Minis Forum sent this out to me for purpose of review. And with this version, the HM90, there are a couple ways you could buy this, a bare bones kit or already set up and whatnot. Now, this does come with an AMD Ryzen 9 4900H APU, which has eight cores, 16 threads, and a base clock of 3.3 gigahertz, overclock up to 4.4 gigahertz. And with that APU, we have the integrated AMD Radeon graphics, which is the RX Vega 8. Now, the version I got has 16 gigabytes of RAM, so it's dual channel with two eight gigabytes of RAM. It does support up to 64 gigabytes. Mine came with a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. And this also has HDMI up to 4K 60 hertz, display port for up to 4K 60 hertz. You could use USB-C for display purposes, 4K 60 again. And then we also have those ethernet ports, gigabit, and then we have 2.5 gigabit. We have a buttload of USB ports for a mini PC in my opinion. We got four USB 3.0s on the back, two 3.1s in the front, and we also have a Wi-Fi 6 Bluetooth 5.1 module in the system. This did ship with Windows 10 Pro. Now, if the NVMe, you know, M2 slot, you don't have enough space there, you wanna expand upon that, opening up the bottom of the case allows you to access the RAM, the SSD, and the Wi-Fi module to allow you to, you know, make some upgrades and whatnot. So there are a couple connections to where you can add a 2.5 inch, couple 2.5 inch SSDs to expand your storage. So a, a lot of room to, you know, grow here with this thing if need be. Now the top case can come off with a bit of work, but with the wiring and whatnot, there's really no, no purpose. I mean, to take the top off, uh, no real need to. It, it is noted that the, uh, the, the CPU cooler that they have in there shouldn't be removed and that they use liquid metal and all that kind of stuff. That's all you can really access from the top. So I didn't want to mess with all that. So th that, that's all fine. The way this thing cools itself, that fan pulls in the air, blows it out the sides. It's, it's a nice little computer here. Now, I don't want to get like crazy into tech specs. I'm sure there's plenty of uh, reviews out there that go like into graphs and pie charts and, and all sorts of crazy stuff. I just want to throw up some basic stats with these games that I'm playing and kind of talk about, you know, what I've noticed, what runs, what doesn't run. I wanted to play some, you know, newer PC games and a little bit of emulation as well. So we'll start off with uh, some Wii U emulation. Now, I didn't really do too much in the way of setup with the emulator that I'm using, but you know, a few tweaks here and there. Uh, there's not a ton of stuff you can do with this emulator for Wii U, but I mean, there's certain things you can do, but I, I kind of left it as is for the most part, other than like one or two little things here. Now with this PC, uh, Wii U was running pretty well. Super Mario Brothers 3D World was 60 FPS at 1080p all day, every day. It was running fantastically well. Same thing with uh, New Super Mario Brothers, the you know U or whatever it's called, Wii U, the Wii U version of the game, um, 60 FPS, 1080p, and was running fantastically well. A lot of games I tested on the Wii U were running like that except for Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild, there's a lot of tweaks you can make to get the best out of this game. Uh, there's whole like forums explaining tons of different things you could do. Uh, I was getting around 30 FPS with the game. Wasn't really stuttering along, it was fairly smooth. Uh, you know, minor tweaks may get some uh, slightly higher, you know, FPS for Breath of the Wild, but I wouldn't expect 60 FPS with that game. Uh, from what I'm reading out there. So Wii U, yeah, for the most part, running well. Tested plenty of other systems that I haven't included in this, in this video. I may do a follow-up if, if people wanna see you know, certain other things, drop a comment down below. 
Um, but yeah, most other systems that I played with the right settings was performing decently well on this uh, PC. But as far as PC games go, I tested a few. Some of my favorites here. Uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon. This is probably one of the only PC games that I tested that kind of gave me a little bit of a, a struggle getting it going. Now, yeah, this, this mini PC can do 4K. I mean, I, I think with media and whatnot, video, if you want to watch movies, stuff like that, it's going to be fine. But gaming-wise, I, I wouldn't really expect too much 4K. I did test this out at 1440 for a couple games, and it was just like it wasn't happening, even on like fairly low settings with certain games. But at 1080p, almost everything I ran ran very well. Uh, they have a lot of like charts that they've shared on their website uh, explaining you know okay. what you can expect with certain games and the performance that they got with tests and and all that kind of stuff and for the most part it, it seems like that's fair but I wanted to test games that you know weren't on that list and maybe not a lot of people talk about but yeah Yakuza like a dragon I had to go down the 720p and this was the only one like even at like 1080 at like you know medium settings wasn't really performing dipping it down the low settings the fps was just unbearable but at 720 i could get 30 fps it was it was playable may not look as pretty as it should but the game was playable now moving on to stuff like street butter 5 at 1080p i was getting uh, 45 frames per second fairly consistent around that the game ran very well and it looked good now Moving on to some uh, Microsoft games, I was actually surprised. I mean, I, I guess maybe Microsoft, they really put a lot of effort into optimizing their games for, you know, different builds of PCs and whatnot, uh, because these games, I didn't have too much of an issue. I didn't really have to go in and tweak too much. I think they just optimize it depending on the system that you're running. Uh, so Halo and Infinite, Infinite, multiplayer and campaign, at 1080p um, on mostly low settings, I was getting 30 to 40, fr f you know, 30 to 45 frames per second, and I feel like that was fine for me. I know that's not going to be what a professional gamer wants out of this game, but campaign-wise, definitely playable in my opinion. Uh, it ran very well. I mean, this isn't like a high-end gaming PC, so some of these things just kind of, you know, you, you got to go in knowing what you're you're expecting here now moving on to uh, Forza Horizon 5 this one ran very well as well 1080p uh, mostly low settings 40 to 50 frames per second fairly consistent so I had a lot of fun playing it on this this uh, mini PC here I, I, I played this game for probably an hour or so uh, while I was filming some footage like I just got into it I mean I've been playing it on the uh, the Xbox Series S and X and I felt like it was fine here, not the, my preferred way to play it, but hey, if this is an option for you and you want to get a little gaming out of it, you want to use this uh, PC for various other reasons, yeah, it looks like, I mean, you'll be able to play some stuff decently well. So the final game that I, I tested was uh, Demon Slayer, fairly new game from Sega out there, uh, 1080, 1080p, low to medium settings, 30 frames per second consistently. A fairly smooth experience played just fine the game initially launched at just capped 30 frames per second and that's how I played it here and it was pretty much fine in my opinion uh, if I bumped it up to 60 frames per second it did struggle a little bit so I felt like leaving it in the settings you could change it to 30 or 60 for this game I, I felt like leaving at the, the default of 30 frames per second. Um, it, it was fairly good. It played just fine for me. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of games here. More recent games that will play on this system decently well, in my opinion. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of your other kinds of tasks you want to use this for. Some editing, some minor editing and, you know, photo stuff, uh, you know, art, documents, those kind of things, business stuff. I mean, it's going to be fine for most of that kind of stuff. No big issue. Uh, that's what I just wanted to show. Like, hey, this is my experience gaming on this thing. And I felt like it did a decent job for what this system is. If you have a purpose for something like this, one of these mini PCs, this may be 
one to look at. So if you're interested, link will be in the description. Really do appreciate every single one of you guys watching. Thanks for hanging. Drop comments down below on anything else you want to see me test. I could do like a quick follow-up just testing games. A little bit of talk and just, you know, things I noticed. Let me know down below. Catch you on the next one. Bye.